Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Could It Come Back? And today we're going to be talking about the 1970s sci fi series, an all time UK classic, Jerry Anderson's first live action apart from his film Doppelganger, UFO, which a lot of things came over from Journey to the Far Side of the Sun and Doppelganger, like a lot of. Uh, props and stuff so ufo is set in in the 1980s as it's meant to be even though everybody's wearing disco and purple wigs we're gonna get into all that but just a quick overall uh, shadow has been set up uh, to fight an alien race it's coming to earth and stealing body parts so the supreme headquarters alien defense organization is here to defend the earth from underneath a movie studio so we have uh, Ed Bishop as uh, Commander Straker, George Sewell as uh, Colonel Freeman, Wanda Ventham as the delectable uh, Colonel Virginia Lake, Benedict Cumberbatch's mum, and uh, <laughs> and we have uh, Michael Billington who ended up on the Oneidan line many years later as Foggy, and uh, plays Colonel Foster, which I. I have to say, Colonel Foster is one of my favourite characters. He came in the episode Exposed, which was really good. Now, the aliens, uh, you learn a lot about Shadow and its set up, General Henderson and, and the body that governs it and how Straker goes to the UN to get the financing for it. It's all sort of interesting stuff. You find out quite a bit about Straker's uh, life so Straker's, uh, he lost his marriage because uh, he was setting up Shadow because the aliens are just taking people and murdering everybody. And uh, he loses his kid in one episode because the decision has to be made to stop a UFO, save his kid. And Colonel Freeman orders the plane with the medicine for his son who has an accident uh, to send the mobiles to stop the UFO. It's quite an intense episode. I mean, he loses his son. And his wife's screaming at him, you know. It, it, it's a real powerful episode. I have to say it's one of the best in science fiction I've ever seen. So the aliens, they're a bit insane. Uh, I mean, they control time. and uh, Well, apparently they were here stealing body parts. And then we found out later on. Because when UFO were being filmed, it moved studios. And they didn't, the second part didn't get done for about five months. And uh, when they did out, some of the cast weren't there, like Gabriel Drake as Gay Ellis. Uh, the, well, they've moved on. So, But if you mix the episodes up, it's like they're always there. So, like, the aliens, there's a bit of crazy stuff going on with them. You never quite figure out. They come from a dying world, as in the episode ASP. Is explains quite a bit when they take over Croxley uh, telepathically. Uh, Jackson, uh, I love Jackson. Vladik Shabal, one of the creepiest actors I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I've always got time for this guy when he's on the telly. You just can't trust him. So, like, when he, he figures out this insane theory that they don't have bodies and they've been removing parts of our brains and then, like, creativity and free will and then they can go in and we get used as human computers. So this is the first time I've had to load this bloody video up today. It's driving me mad. Uh, but we do persist. So... What happened, like the alien scheme, there is sort of a couple of schemes now, that, now they need our body parts or whatever, and they have fluid when they travel in space in their helmets and they breathe it in. It's, uh, UFO has a lot of plot holes in the original series. So, like, there's quite a lot going on. I do recommend, if you've never seen it, it's probably the one of the best British sci-fi series going. The episode got banned. Uh, it's the LSD one where these two hippies take out acid. And they're tripping off the heads and the aliens turn up and they've got a device and the two people that are tripping on LSD end up running off with it. And the aliens catch one of them, but they've got the, it's like a bomb that's going to blow up half of Britain to cause tidal waves and like destroy part of the world. It's like they're up for doing a lot of damage, but keeping some of the population alive. So now the question is, 
Like, would you, I'll just give you a quick overview over it all. Just Wikipedia, what you need. It is an insane series. There's episodes where Straker re, uh, acts his way back into reality. I'm not making this up. And a cat that gets taken over by an alien. Yeah, the cat with nine lives. Let's not go there. Right. But these episodes... So if UFO came back today... So, like, it's 2022, and Netflix Amazon have now decided to finance a 10-part series about the Supreme Headquarters Alien Defence Organisation, Shadow, the TV series, UFO. So, how I'd start, I'd start this series in Roswell. You know when the first alien crash, it's one of their ships comes down. And uh, I'd take things out from the last days, like the, the UFO's going to unlast in our atmosphere for a couple of days. Ship comes down in 1940s, and it freaks a lot of people out, especially in the government. So over the next few years, there's problems. People are being abducted all over the world. And we get into the uh, 70s, there's the Rendlesham Forest incident where nuclear weapons have been posted there, have been, uh, how do you say, deactivated by a light in the sky. There's an incident with some soldiers in the forest, and after that, it freaks the governments of, of the world out. It goes, there's a committee set up at the UN representing the most powerful nations and wealthiest nations on this planet. It's decided in a meeting that all the countries that do have extraterrestrial technology, they bring it all together and they create an organisation called Shadow. Now, Colonel Straker and General Henderson, because uh, the Americans have put most of the money into it, they, they're going to lead it and they're going to take the best of the military from across the world. But it's going to be top secret. Now, Shadow wouldn't be... Uh, under a movie studio because of the internet and, you know, social media. It'd be based in Greenland. I'd put it somewhere out of the way where nobody knows where it is. And then it'd have installations and things all over the world. Now, the Harlington Straker thing, studio name, could be used as a corporate front for Shadow. That's what I'd do with it. Now, now I I go I do the first series in setting Shadow up it, it, where they're getting the technology they've reversed engineered it with the best scientists, but there's a twist. The aliens have a presence on our planet. They've got operatives who the mind control, and the aliens do have a base here. But when Shadow gets set up, they can't get stuff through because the interceptors. Because the interceptors are stopping the sources from getting through. One or two do get through, but they're abducted people. Now, there is some sources based on Earth, wherever they are, it's in the ocean. It could be in a mountain. It's, it's hidden away, but the aliens are there in human bodies, or, what, or there's a, an environment for their whatever form they have. But they've got a big plan. They're going to wipe out 70, 80% of the human race and then take the planet. There's not a lot of them left. They're desperate. The world's dying, and so they start using all the crazy technology like Time Lash, the episode Time Lash, an incident with Straker like that happens, ESP. You bring in some of the original stories, but get rid of the plot holes, and you make the aliens malevolent. Now, I'd, you could have one or two friendly ones that sort of want to live here amongst us, because if they know that the world's dying, and there's trying to destroy ours isn't going to serve them so now the alien the, the alien technology it doesn't have to be their technology other ships could have come down over centuries or over years it's just that they're from a star system near ours so they can sort of travel here uh, but they are desperate and they despise us you know so they are so what happens after Rendlesham there's a big disaster and uh, millions of people die and then that's, that's what brings in the forefront of the creation of Shadow. Because there's a bigger threat from outside than all the internal squabbling on this planet. And then it's deemed it's kept secret. Because if the world finds out, people will panic and freak out. And you know, all that type of stuff. But because it's the internet, 
we could have like pages in UFO sightings and people going on about a secret organisation. Now, now I would X-Files shadow up a bit as well, because their whole job is to protect this planet and deal with all the weird shit on this planet. So if there is stuff here that's a bit odd and strange, Shadow now comes into this, and they have ways of dealing with it, and they learn about it. They could be in the dimensional areas. They even meet supernatural stuff. I mean, this is all, this is a world only few people knew about. You know, and I put a bit of comedy, I'd had a bit of comedy, I'd have an FBI agent in certain seasons trying to prove they exist, but the keeper raising his mind. And eventually by season five, he, he cracks it and they give it, they take him in because he's so persistent, you know. It's a bit of a tribute to the X-Files, but I would bring sort of some like the X-Files into this, I really would. Now, Shadow, they'll have a moon base, they'll have a space station, and uh, there's a. I'd, I'd put up like a, de a satellite defense grid around the Earth uh, with this. You remember Independence Day, too, when they created all that sort of technology? They're sort of th that level, you know, with defense grid, but it's all kept secret. They did it in Stargate, didn't they? But if there's any advances made uh, ben uh, benefit mankind, they're released through the Harlington Straker Corporation. So, like, we get the alien agenda, and I bring other stuff in, but, like, Shadow gets infiltrated in the first season, and by the second season, this gets exposed. There's, at the end of the second season, there's a massive assault on the moon base, and Shadow holds the line, almost. You know, they use nuclear weapons to uh, stop these, you know, the sources from, like, taking the moon. So they hold the line, but it's big. the death toll is big. So Straker, we're going to cover him just for a little bit now. So Straker's family was abducted by these aliens, and he's ruthless. He's called Alec Freeman's like his support mate, you know. And he's, there's a good thing, like Gaya Ellis runs the moon base section, Foster runs Skydiver. And, and that it's you know because it's all got to be kept secret and, the, and they've got a base in Antarctica or an island out in the Caribbean there's things like that, how it works you know but there's Henderson General Henderson by season 3 will be compromised and he starts trying to like sh restrict Shadow's powers now Straker wants to expand the moon defences he wants more money and it's kicking off. Now, the aliens have this big agenda, this big weapon that's going to, like, basically wipe out 70% of life on this planet. And then they're going to come here. But by season, end of season three, Shadow stop them. One of the main characters will be killed off. I don't know who. I'm going to leave that to you. And then we move into season four. So in season four, I'd have uh, Anderson compromised and uh, he, he sort of removes Straker from command and puts somebody else in. Now, Shadow of your creative devices to detect if you uh, are compromised. But they've worked their way around that because the aliens want to get this device in from their planet to Earth and they send in a load of sources and they get destroyed by Shadow interceptors. Now, the Shadow Interceptors carry multiple, like, multiple weapon systems, not just one rocket this time. But they do carry a nuclear, they do standard blank the area with nuclear weapons, and then they're going for the kill. Sort of interesting how it's going to work, but they, they, Shadow catch the device, and this is when Straker gets sort of removed from command, because uh, they need this device in their installation to do what they're going to do. And there's a lot of problems, but Straker, uh, the aliens get hold of him by a road. You know that, that scene in UFO is quite a freaky scene where just a lonely road and people get abducted on this road. You know, it happens to Straker. And uh, he gets saved by one of the aliens that's sort of not on our side, but wants to rather just live in peace, you know. And uh, she gets Straker out and... Uh, they end up damaging Shadow, actually, the main headquarters, to find its location, damage it. 
And that's where we end up on season four, where General Anderson is exposed at the end and Straker kills him. You know, he's got no choice. And Shadows, it's been knocked back after victories they've had. And season five is where the aliens are going to make the big move. So the aliens start the plot in season five. Shadows, like, crippled. And what's left of it? Gets Straker, gets it together. And they start hitting back, but it's not enough. And the aliens are building this device. Then they find out where the aliens are based. And they they take a fleet of sky skydiver submarines to where this base is. And they take it out. But the aliens have moved from there. It was a bit of a setup because they knew that Straker would do this. But Straker had always been forward thinking as a backup plan. Now, after the death of one of his, uh, lead, uh, how do you say, it? one of his crewmates or staff, you know, whoever it is, it could be Freeman. It'd be interesting if it were Alec Freeman, actually, because he's like. His conscience. So it's Colonel Foster leads the assault with Gay Ellis and, and Colonel Lake on their final installation. Massive battle, and then I go for full exposure to the world. It comes out, you know, and 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 that's where I take take it. They defeat them. The aliens get defeated. They're dying, uh, but the war accepts even when they are, they get offered a peace thing on the table. A lot of them won't accept it because they think they're superior and they've got every right by, you know, to take this planet. But Straker kills them all, accepts a few of the survivors. And they're what's left of their race and they're here. But they have caused a lot of damage and so it's kept secret, even though they've been exposed, the aliens that live here, they're, they're sort of protected because they help shadow. I'd go down something like that, that type of path. Now, all all this is theoretical. This is I. This is just what I was thinking about the other day because I've been watching it and I thought, where could you take this? And from the X Files all the way to some crazy batshit episodes, you could turn this with today's writing and 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 serious like intense acting and good written drama. UFO could be amazing. How this could be done. You know, it really could. And the vehicles would be incredible. Uh, I mean, to have a secret organisation, it's technologically advanced, fighting a secret war, and nobody knows about it. It would be pretty cool, you know. And there's the thing of exposure with all, like, these nerd people, and, you know, uh, there's websites set up saying, oh, there's an organ, you know, and they have to shut it down. But as a bit of comic commentary relief, I would bring in this like FBI agent, which I think would just put the cherry on the cake. And there is some awesome episodes from the original series that could be redone and made more intense. UFO is one of them things. Please check it out. It deserves to come back. Now, a few years ago, there was rumours that I'd to set up a website and they were going to it's going to be set in 2060 shadow and all this UFO and uh, about incursions and that. But uh, this project, I did see some of the artwork on a website, but the website's gone now. And they never got the financing. I think it fell through. They had the rights for it. So such a shame because UFO, as I've discussed, Blake 7 and the invaders, that these things do deserve to come back. Uh, now, you're going to ask why I've got the Invaders music on with this video. Because I got copyrighted three times when I did this video. So I can't use the UFO music. I even tried Jeff Love and his bloody orchestra and it didn't work. So please subscribe to the channel. Uh, please give me a like. Uh, check into the podcast. Uh, let me know your thoughts on where you'd let UFO go. I would be fascinated to hear that. Uh, we'll be covering UFO in the podcast in a few weeks. So have a great week and I will speak to you all soon and look up into, look up into the skies. Live long and prosper.